Well, good morning. I want to talk about uh, the free flow of information through data uh, and uh, some of the services that I'm um, kind of keen about lately. I've been experiencing some trouble with uh, Blogger or, or my um, Teach and Learn Online Blogspot. And um, the trouble wasn't really with me uh, and my account, but it was with me showing others how to set up new accounts and uh, Blogger is in the middle of doing a big upgrade uh, and for some reason it was just really counterintuitive and difficult or, or even impossible to create a new account, log out and then log back in and no amount of, no amount of help searching was solving that for me. Not to mention a kind of uh, self-consciousness about using everything Google these days. So I went on the on the look for um, a way to set up a new blog and import everything from my old blog into that new blog. And so I went off first place to EduBlogs. Uh, let me just find where I had EduBlogs. There it is there. EduBlogs is maintained in Australia, uh, set up by James Farmer. And it was remarkably easy. Uh, pretty much two clicks and I have imported everything from my old blog into uh, this new new blog platform which is a WordPress platform. The only problem I have uh, with EduBlogs is for some reason the videos embedded are not displaying. I haven't really looked too far in that to find out why. Uh, but so I went and tested it with WordPress. Here's WordPress with a slightly different um, template and as you can see, the embedded videos are sitting there nicely. That's not a in video, that's just a picture. Now, the only thing I don't like about WordPress is apparently it has a 50 megabyte limit, or it says on my dashboard anyway, but after importing nearly two years worth of blog, I still have used 0% of that 50 megabytes, so I'm not sure how closely they're tracking that. So I have a decision to make between EduBlogs and WordPress at this stage, but the main thing I wanted to point out is just how remarkably easy it was to import my old blogger. Here I'm looking at the dashboard of the WordPress blog for Learn Online. Now I can't remember, uh, at first glance it looks a bit funny, but I'm just going to have to try and find um, how to import a blog. I think it was in maybe options. No, it wasn't options. Those who know are probably chewing their nails wondering if I'm going to find it. Uh, presentation. No, that's where you choose your templates. There's quite a large number of templates to choose from. Um, must be manage. And there it is. Import and export, mind you. So I click import and they're the four blog platforms that it will import from and Blogger being one of them. So you click Blogger and because it's recognizing that I'm logged in it usually would ask you for your username and password and it lists all your Blogger blogs there. So <laughs> as you can see I've got a few to pull in from. It was also really uh, nifty in combining two blogs. For a while now I've had What To Do which is Screencast's blog and Learn Online which is formerly Teach and Learn Online and essentially they're about the similar or the same thing so I split them originally because uh, some friends suggested that it would be better to have the screencasts all on their own and the learn online stuff uh, separate but I think it's better combined so I uh, combined those two and draw, drew all the data from them into the single blog so that was a quite a nifty little um, thing I didn't see coming now this importing data from uh, quickly and easy from uh, easily from other services into new services uh, raised some questions I guess about those services offering themselves for free and the flexibility that that enables somebody uh, and uh, brand the loyalty and all that marketing concept. On a similar term is blog lines which I've just imported into uh, Google Reader. Now let me just get blog lines up over Chris's blog there. Blocklines.com. Congratulations, Chris, too, on your Edu Blogs Awards. Okay, now looking at my feeds, 
so this was formerly how Bloglines was looking at and again I, I was having some issues with Bloglines. I set a new person up recently and couldn't for the life of me work out how to um, get a new feed into their new account. Quite straightforward for me uh, with my account but not for a new new account. Not to mention that the feeds are a bit funny. Sometimes they're displaying you know, something like five new feeds and I click those new feeds and they're not new at all. So I was getting a little annoyed with Bloglines. So to import all of your feeds from Bloglines into a new feed reader like the Google Reader here, you go to Edit, and uh, from memory it was down the bottom, and here it is down here, let's just wait for the screen thing to come down here, Export Subscriptions. Okay, now what it wants to do is it wants to export an XML document and save the file to on my computer. This is called an OPML file and it has all the information uh, that another reader needs to, to set yourself up with you know, a, a 200 strong feed list I have in this Bloglines account. So I could save that to the disk. I won't do it now but I just want to demonstrate. So you save that OPML file to your computer and then you go off to Google Reader. Now this has already been done so it won't look like this to you. But if you now look at settings and they have a little button there called Import Export. And just here it's asking me to select the OPML file, so that's fairly straightforward. I just browse to the OPML file wherever I saved it on my computer and click Upload. Just while we're in the settings, have a look at goodies here. And there's one little goodie that's an absolute beauty. Let's say uh, the thing I also don't like about blog lines and feed readers generally is that you're reading the entries from people's blogs and other sort of data feeds out of context. In other words, that the data has been taken out of its um, uh, display template and displayed in the blog lines template or, or the Google readers um, uh, template. This next button is just a button that you just literally click and drag up to here on your bookmarks bar. Now if I was to click that next, it simply goes through each of my each of the blogs that have new postings and it just so happens I've subscribed to my own one testing its reader out testing its um, RSS out but if I click next it's probably going to go through all of mine here yes it is but that's what it does is it goes through all of the new posts to this blog that I'm subscribed to and eventually and I only just subscribed to it so it's probably got about 15 or so more there and eventually it will click over to the next blog and the next blog and the next blog. So the beauty of that is that I know I'm reading the most recent information to the blogs that I'm interested in but in the context of their blog. So there's often in blogs extra information around on their menu bars and stuff like that that I may not be seeing in the RSS feed. Here we go. We've just switched to a new feed here. I'm not too sure where that feed is. See, there you go. I'm not used to looking at blogs in context so I'm I'm having difficulty recognizing it. And also, um, sim similar to other web-based feed readers, is it gives you a button there to um, upload. So that if I come across a blog that I don't, that I know I'm not subscribed to, I can quickly click that button, button, and it will subscribe to my Google Reader. And so you can see we're on to the next one. So that next button is pretty funky. Uh, a friend of mine showed it to me last night and what he does is he actually, uh, in his Google Reader, which we'll go and have a look at now, he subscribes to uh, a number of blogs as do I, but then he categorizes his blogs with a tag word and then he sets up his next button to only go through the blogs that have been categorized under that particular tag word. Instead of going through all of his blogs, he'll just go through a list of blogs that he likes to look at in context. And he uses the aesthetics of the template to choose which ones he's going to go through. So that's just a look at uh, two uh, services that offer their, the data that you're creating uh, in their, on their platform as an exportable data set that you can import into a completely separate service. It's a remarkable Web2 feature. 
offering a lot of freedom and flexibility if you're using free and web-based tools.